Have you thought about creating a podcast but didn't know where to start, how to go about it, or you were just totally overwhelmed by your fear of the tech? Then you need to listen to this episode because I am talking to Stevie Dillon, who has been in your shoes and has not only created a super successful podcast, but now teaches people just like you how to do it. This one is filled with so much gold. I know you're going to love it. And make sure you listen to the end for a very special bonus. Welcome to Sales Without Socials. If you too are mentally exhausted from the constantly changing algorithms, you're not going to return on the blood, sweat and tears you put into your social media efforts and know there must be a better way to market your business, then you are in the right place. I'm your host, Tanya Williams. I love pink wearing four-inch heels, and being the sparkly chief of everything at Digital Conversation. In the last six months, I have transformed my business growth by doubling down on the marketing strategies that actually work, and that doesn't include Facebook ads, reels, or silly TikToks. So if you're like me, and you're sick of being on the social media hamster wheel and want to focus your time on marketing strategies that don't suck your time without a result, then make sure you subscribe and keep listening. Are you with me? Let's dive in. And oh, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun along the way. I'm excited to announce that the waitlist is now open for our upcoming webinar, Swap Social Media for Sales. This free training is for people who are exhausted by the social media hamster wheel, and it is especially for B2B service-based business owners. If you are sick of spending hours every week trying to get results on social, just hear crickets on your posts and wonder why it isn't working, and you want to learn how you can spend less time marketing but get better results, then this is the training for you. Go to saleswithoutsocials.com.au forward slash free webinar, register and stay tuned for details. Hello, everybody. It is Tanya Williams here, founder of the Sales Without Socials podcast and chief of everything at Digital Conversations. And I am back with a another podcast episode today. And I have a very special guest. And we are going to be talking about, funnily enough, all things podcasting. So I would like to welcome Stevie Dillon. Uh, Stevie has a very successful podcast of her own and she is now teaching people like me and you um, to do the exact same thing. So uh, let's uh, jump over and talk to Stevie. She's the expert. Hey, Stevie. Hey, hello. How are you? Great to have you on the show. Great to be on the show. Thank you so much for asking me. My pleasure. Well, you are the person that I learnt um, from and I'm still learning, but the initial, you know, setting up a podcast and, oh, my God, where do I start? What do I do? You are my go-to um, and the course that you um, that you put out there and we're going to talk more about that is what I did and that's what triggered me to start my podcast. So I figure let's talk more about podcasting to share it with uh, other people. So do we want to maybe start by you introducing yourself a lot better than what I have done and telling people a little bit about your background to give us a bit of context? Sure. Uh, And from my end, I'm so proud of your podcasting prowess now, Tanya. (laughs) Seeing (laughs) you with like your podcast mic and all of the things, I'm like, wow, you're killing it. So congrats to you. Thank you. I feel like podcasting is one of those things that like you put on the one day list and you don't actually like do it. So I feel like, yeah, how many, how many episodes are you in now? I'm at the end of season two. So um, I've got one more episode after this, which will be 24. So I'm still very new. Do you know most podcasts are abandoned after three episodes? Oh, really? Yeah. So there you go. So I'm winning. (laughs) (laughs) So a little bit about me. I have a business called The Course Cartel and I help people to create digital programs uh, and launch their podcasts. So they're the two things I do. Um, And I have done that for the last three years or so in a program called Launchpad, which is a high touch group coaching program where I help people and hold their hand through the process of getting their courses up and running. Uh, Through the experience that I have in doing it myself and like fumbling through and trying to figure it all out, I just didn't want people to go through the uh, rigmarole of creating digital courses that I went through. Uh, And so, yeah, that has been a labor of love for the last three years or so. There are 
some little changes coming on that scene. I feel like we're catching up for our podcast as I'm in a state of flux and we can chat through that as well. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, that's me. So two ways that you can work with me are basically at the moment inside of our Launchpad program and also inside of Launch a Wildly Successful Podcast where I help people get their podcasts out into the world. And I can vouch for both of those programs because I was in Launchpad last year um, and I must say, as someone who has tried for a long time to, and every year it was like, this year I'm going to launch a course, this year I'm going to launch a course, and never really got very far or put something out there that just got no traction, going through Launchpad and the process that you have was a total flip on everything that I'd done in the pre- previously, but it all made total sense. And I went, why didn't I think about this before? Like I, I've just been doing it the total wrong way. Um, so going through that and it's so detailed and, um, it, you know, that step by step and you're there along the way was just really great. I, I learned so much from it. And the same thing with the Well This Successful podcast program as well. Um, I must admit that did uh, detract me from my course because <laughs> I started that while I was still doing Launchpad, which is probably not the best idea. And I was like, oh, my God, it's all your fault. You've distracted me. <laughs> but um, podcasting was one of my um, traffic funnels. So um, it made sense to sort of jump in and do that as well. So I can certainly vouch for those. And they go and hand in hand. If you've got the authority that comes from a podcast and you have the digital program, it's like this match made in heaven. So yeah. They yeah. work together, right? Yeah. Um, and of course, you've been online for many years because I've been following. Well, Stevie says social when when um, and obviously that was a brand you had for quite a long time for for quite a few years, and obviously that was focused on social media. And um, and here we are talking about not focusing on social media. So, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's dive into the podcasting stuff. How long have you been podcasting for? Okay, so I think about three to four years. I think it was 2018. I actually got like a Facebook notification. I know that social media is banned on this podcast. So I won't <laughs> <We can mention it. laughs> but I got the notification that I it was like, yeah, I think four years ago, 2018, um, yeah. that I was launching the podcast and I put this like big announcement out and I was like, unsure how it was all going to go. Don't even know like what the impetus was for going, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this podcast. I was like a mad podcast listener. Like I think I'm probably like one of the very first podcast listeners ever. Like I somehow (laughs) came across it. I don't know how. And I used to go for walks around the Brizzy River and I was still in corporate and I just started listening to like Lewis Howes, so yep. he's like a big yep. podcaster, James Shremko, who I still think is amazing, uh, and a few like different podcasters that started to like open up my ears to a potential life outside of corporate. And yep. so I think the reason why I decided to go in and start it, yeah, four-ish years ago was because I knew the impact that it had had for me. Like I think back and I'm like, if I didn't go for those walks every morning, And if I wasn't listening to those people in my ear, just like showing me another way, I don't think I'd even be sitting here. So, yeah. Yeah. They're they're pretty, I mean, I love them. I listen to them in the car. I listen for, I do the same thing when I'm going for a walk. I put podcasts on. I find them very inspirational, particularly if you're having a really crappy day (laughs) as you do in business and you're like, I just need something to lift me up. I need something. I want to learn something new or I need a different perspective on things. I know that's one of the things I love about podcasts. Is there a, there's a podcast on literally any topic you can pretty much think of, right? Yeah. So my partner has just started to get like, crazy into podcasts and he has opened up my eyes to like the depth and breadth of topics like he's yeah. right into like paddle boarding and then he follows these people that have these podcasts on like the most niche areas of like paddle boarding and he listens to these like one hour episodes on them and I'm like wow <laughs> it's like a whole different rabbit hole in a whole different world yeah yeah and I love and the, I, like, I love me about it right and I also love like shameless like I love listening to like the podcasts that allow me to stop thinking because I think yeah. sometimes you need that as well absolutely absolutely so um, and we sort of covered this a little bit in in what we just what we were just talking about but why did you start a podcast what at the end of the day what did you go right I'm going to do this and this is why I'm going to do it and this is what I'm going to be talking about so I think like business related like I 
was like the social media girl. So I had a job um, for like a luxury residential real estate agency in Brisbane. And so I was like the traditional marketing manager for them. And then they were kind of like, hey, Stevie, can you just like start doing this digital stuff for us? And I was like, okay, I'll learn, fine. And then I just totally fell in love with it. I was like, this is the best thing ever. I feel like I've found my calling. I am obsessed with this. And so I like was working all day at my job doing their digital stuff and loving it, like literally just felt so lit on fire. And then I was like, oh, what can I do outside of like my job to learn more? And I feel like sometimes the best way to learn is by teaching. Mm -hmm. And so I started this blog and I would write these like massive epic articles on like how I'm growing my social media accounts. And then from there, I was like, maybe a more efficient way to do this (laughs) would be the podcasting. So like talking about social media, basically. And so I didn't even really have like a business, like it wasn't like, I'm going to do this and it's going to be a funnel into my business. And then I'm going to create a course and it's going to be like, I did not think of any of that. So the podcast really came before the business came. Kind of. So I like had started on the side working with some social media management clients and I'm trying to think of the timeline. Like I remember like a big milestone for me was like, I went to Europe for like a month at one stage and it just took me out of like my everyday And I was like, I think I could go all in on the business. And I can't remember, I either started the podcast that year or maybe it was the year after when I just started with social media management clients, but either way, like very, very, very early on. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to get more social media management clients with this podcast. It was more like, I love this so much. And I was getting over, so... I'm 40 this year and this was like I was around like 33-ish and I was like one of the, like I just loved going out and partying and like all of the things until one day I didn't and I was like, hmm, what am I going to like put all of my energy into if it's not like (laughs) going to the bar on a Friday night? And then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just do this to fill my time. Like it's something to do with my weekends and I loved it. And I feel like I'm all in on whatever I do. So like I'm all in on like being the social girl and then I'm like all in on like starting the podcast. So yeah, it wasn't a big strategic business decision, but it ended up being the best thing for the growth of my business. Evolved naturally, organically, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So how long did it take you to actually get any sort of real traction in terms of getting some good numbers and generating leads from it for the business? So I started, I didn't have like any, like I didn't know what was good. Like I didn't know what good numbers were. And I actually can't even recall my very early numbers. I'd be curious to go back and check. I do know like in the very, very early days, it was easy. Like there were, there was less, a little bit less competition. And so I do suspect probably my numbers, I would suspect like in those early days, they were probably higher than what they are now. I actually, I'm, I will definitely go back and check. So I'm curious to know. Um, but what the immediate impact was, wasn't like the people listening, although that is still serving me now. Like I have people that come into my programs now, four years later, and they're like, I've been listening to four years of podcast episodes. And then I made the decision. Yeah. Right. Well, I'd been listening to the podcast for quite a while. Yeah. And like, so I was the same. So I'd been listening for a long time, like over 12 months where, where I've listening to this thing called Launchpad Launch. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, hang on, maybe now the timing's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So in the early days, like I, I do remember the timeline now. So it was like April, I started the podcast. Yeah. And then I launched my first online course in the December And I reckon it was from the April to the December. Like if I didn't have that podcast, it would have been a totally different story when it came to my launch. Mm -hmm. So when I really noticed, wow, like people are listening and not only are they listening, but it's building authority enough that they want to purchase from me. I was like, wow, this is huge. Like this is, and it's true. Like I think of the people I listen to, like I went on a walk this morning and it was probably well over an hour and I just listened to this one guy in my ear the whole time and it's like yeah. that's 
so powerful. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, there's just nothing sure. else like it. Because it feels, it, it's sort of like a bit intimate because it feels like you're actually, like you're having a conversation with that person, even though you're not talk, talking and you're listening to them. There is something quite intimate about a podcast, I think. Yeah. It's, it's got a different dynamic to watching something or reading something, like having someone in your ear talking to you and hearing their voice. Mm-hmm. I think there's something to that that just makes it feel a bit more personal as well. I think even more than YouTube because I put like yeah. YouTube and podcasting on like an even keel in terms of, to your point, like I know you always talk about, you know, social media, it's gone in 24 hours and with YouTube and with podcasting, it's not. Like it's evergreen yeah. content. It doesn't go away. But I think the difference between something like YouTube and podcasting is that people go with like search intent to YouTube. So they're like, I'm searching for something specific yeah. and you might pop up. Whereas I feel like with podcasting, it's almost more of like a nurture channel. Like it really, like if you can get people to your podcast and get them in as a listener, like we know for us, if we can do that, like them, like infinitely more likely to buy our stuff. And so it's almost like it's a nurture channel rather than being that like the way that people immediately come across yeah. you. Well, as you said, like and they, they listen to one episode and then they might, this is good, I'll listen to another and then they binge and then they're getting to know you, they're getting to know your products. And as you said, they can be there for it could be a month, it could be 12 months, it could be however long before they actually buy. But by that stage, they're highly qualified, they know you, they understand the product and then it's probably going to be a lot easier to to um, get them in to buy something than it would be if they were just, you know, some random off Facebook or something. Oh, totally. But it's so true. Like yeah. our one of our big marketing strategies now is we literally just run ads to episodes of our podcast because yeah. we know if we can get like a cold person scrolling the social media or whatever and yeah. we can get them over to our podcast, that's like the best way to do it. And it's okay if it takes like six months of them listening because, yeah, yeah And I just find like for me, like I know, like if I listen to a podcast, I make a decision on whether they are the right person to continue learning from. And what I feel like, I mean, I'm obviously in digital products. Um, It's just such an easy leap to go from I'm learning from you on a podcast episode, but it's not giving me like the A to Z transformation Mm -hmm. to okay, I trust this person. There's that no like, and trust. They've got the authority because you've been authoring content and they've been listening to it into, okay, cool. I'm going to take the next step with that person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great way to do that for sure. Yeah. Um, so what are the biggest mistakes that you've made or that you've seen others make throughout this whole setting up, launching a podcast? I mean, I've made all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not report. I always press record is like my number one. Have I pressed record? Okay, yes, I've pressed record. <laughs> but I haven't made that mistake. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've recorded like hour-long podcast episodes and have forgotten to press record. Oh, no. um, so that's definitely like one of the more techie ones. I think like from a strategic level, one thing that stands out to me is like there's a difference between just recording a podcast for the fun of it and like recording a podcast as a sales funnel into your products and programs so if you can get really strategic with making sure that like you're aligning your launch and promotions calendar so here's a really tangible example let's say I'm launching launchpad my group program which I am next month say say I'm launching it um in the lead up to that you would I mean you can bet your bottom dollar that I am creating podcast episodes that Um, are strategically getting people ready for Launchpad. So I'm talking about why creating an online course is the most leveraged thing that you can do. I'm talking about, you know, the four essential elements for online course success. I'm talking about things that are priming people for whatever is on my sales calendar. And so I'm still like creating huge value, but I'm doing it in a way that it's directly feeding into my products and services. And I think that's the difference between having a podcast as a hobby, which don't get me wrong, podcasting is also my hobby, yeah. um, but also having it be like the number one lead generator into your business. Yeah. So you think that like, a, a lot of people, when they think about it from a business perspective, aren't actually 
doing such a great job of aligning it to whatever it is they're selling. They're just sort of going and, and talking about random subjects or random things that may be related in some way, shape or form, but not really strategic as such. Yeah, and I think it's a massive missed opportunity. And I think sometimes it might come from the perception of like, oh, I don't want to be salesy or I don't want to like, you know, cross that line or whatever. I'm here to provide value. But there's actually a way that you can really easily do both. And I think like it's kind of the evolution of being a podcaster. You get on and it's totally fine to like feel your way into it. Like you're doing something for the first time and, you know, it's not fair for it to come out of the gate and it's like perfectly strategic and everything's like lining up. But I do think it gets to a point where you're like, oh, there's actually an opportunity here for me to really strategically provide incredible value and also prime people to be ready for my offers in a way that never feels salesy. Yeah. And you do a great job of that because it doesn't come across as sales. It it comes across as I genuinely want to share this information that's going to help you. And you can take this and run with it yourself. Or if you need that extra help, then, hey, you can come over in here and I can help you. Yeah. And then it doesn't feel like pushy either because I feel like it's totally okay for someone to binge your podcast for a year, two yeah. years, whatever it is, and they still get amazing value from it. And then yeah. maybe it's three launches from now that they're like, no, nah, I'm ready, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, timing is one of those things, isn't it? It's like just someone's not necessarily going to listen to a podcast straight away and you're going to get a result from it. I think one of the things, I think it was in the course, in the, actually in the course we spoke about podcasting is more of a longer term strategy it's not a hey I'm going to start a podcast tomorrow and all of a sudden I'm going to have all this new business come in the door the next day yeah and I think that's probably another mistake like and I think that's why there's like this graveyard of like (laughs) podcast shows that have like three episodes and then it's ditched because it's like it's work to do it right yeah but I don't think we give it enough time to like really let it build up and also to allow ourselves to suck a little bit because we always suck when we first start out. Like I would love to go uh-huh. back and listen to some of my earliest podcast episodes. My gosh. Um, but it's like the consistently the consistency of doing it that will get you better as a podcaster. And then also it's the consistency of people listening to it for a period of time that's actually going to help the sales in your business. Like it's not fair to, and I think this is, this is the case with a lot of marketing, but I do think particularly with podcasting, it's not fair um, to say I've put so much work into this and I put so much into the setup and you're three or four or 10 or 12 or 20 podcast episodes in and you're still not getting the sales in. A lot of the time it's the same, same as digital courses. It's a lot of upfront setup and it's a lot of upfront skill that you need to develop. And it's for the people that are willing to keep going but get to see the fruits of the other side and it always makes me sad when someone like gives up too early I'm like no because like the good stuff is on the other side but we're so conditioned to believe that and you know people sell this online like you're gonna have the quick wins you're gonna have all of the things or you know podcasting is easy or digital courses are easy and it's like but actually it's not it's hard and that's okay and it's going to take time and that's okay and not everyone's willing to do it but for the people that are they get to see the fruits of it so yeah yeah and I think that's such a big thing these in marketing in general in particular is that people just want everything to happen so quickly it's like oh I've done this and it didn't work that then it's just like well of course it didn't work you didn't give it long enough to work and you're told that they can get that that's the problem There's enough like stuff online at the moment that tells people that they can get it quickly. And so who's to blame here? Like there's a false belief that is being perpetuated by people that are selling it online. But the problem is that it sells. And so they keep doing it. And so I don't know, I think about this a lot. I'm like, it's this cycle of like people are believing it because they're being told it. But it, they're being told it because it sells and therefore they're buying and it. it's like this big like cycle. And I think I think the thing is they want to believe it, right? They want to believe that there's a really easy, simple way for them to get results with with anything. You see it with weight loss, you see it with marketing. It's like there's yeah. so many different areas people go, how do I get the fastest possible results without the and with the least possible effort? Yeah. And I think that's part of the problem is they think it's the same with the core stuff. I know how much work goes into it and I'm still not there yet. It's like, oh, my God, like you have to put the time and the effort in if you want to get the results for it. You're not just going to do this thing and and magically it's just going to happen overnight or it's going to transform your business in no time. And Actually, I get really angry when I see all that crap 
on Instagram and Facebook that talks about this. Oh, look at me. I work two hours a day and I'm flying around first class and I'm doing it. And you just go, bullshit. Like, come on. <laughs> People yeah. believe that this is actually possible in 30 days. Like, it's just so crazy to me. Yeah. I think I think about this a lot. I think people want to believe, like I do it myself. There's like, I even think about like health and things like that. I'm like, I want the quick wins. Like I definitely have bought into things because I'm like, I'm going to get the quick win. But I think with anything like that, if you really like stop and you think and you center yourself, you're like, is this too good to be true? And if it is, it's like, well, just back your own like beliefs around that. It doesn't mean, but the big thing, especially coming back to podcasting, it doesn't mean that it's not worth it. I think like anything that has like a moat around it in terms of it takes a time investment or it takes an energy investment or you need to learn a skill in order to do it, it builds a moat between you and all of the people that aren't willing to do that. And that's actually a really good thing because if it was really easy, like they all say online, then everyone would do it and then no one would get traction with it. So it's good. Like it is good that it has a moat around it if you're willing to. I like that analogy. That yep. building moat, so you sort of that gives you that distance and that um, advantage over your competitors because you've taken that step. And you've, you're, you're already over the other side, and they're still back here trying to get yeah. over. It's true. It's it true. is. I love it. I love yeah. that analogy. <laughs> I actually, I talking about first class and business class flights. Um, I was working with a guy on Instagram. Came across him on Instagram. Still not saying that social is the thing. It's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he was, um, he like worked with me to get some flights. I've just been like collecting points or whatever. And I was like, how good would it be if there was just like a website where you could have all of the reward point availability for all of the flights that you want to take? And he was like, Stevie, if there was that, there wouldn't be any business class flights. And I'm like, <laughs> Mm, good point so it's like a similar type of thing you know like you build a moat around it so that you can do the thing that if everyone was doing it wouldn't be effective yeah totally so um let's talk about what people need to do or where where they should start when they've got no idea now I know when I was thinking about podcasts but it's been sitting there off to the side for a while and it was like oh because I've got three businesses what one do I want to start a podcast for would it do I want to start a podcast how hard not and then I got to the tech thing and oh my god the text is going to totally overwhelm me I'm not going to be able to do this because I'm I hate anything that's too technically challenging um and I'm straight away I'm just like I'm, I'm out so I think that is one thing in particular that overwhelms a lot of people because they think oh my god this is going to be so hard what is the, the one or two one, two or three things that people need to start with um, when it comes to, okay, I want to do a podcast. What now? Yeah. I mean, it is a little bit more technically challenging, but that is also another moat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I do, like, I get it. Like I'm not a techie person. What I will say is like, when it comes to podcasting, honestly, you can get it set up by following very simple steps, even if you are not a techie person. Yes, I'm not I'll saying you will, get stuck. <laughs> you will get stuck, but everything is figure outable. Yes. And then you have the skill of knowing that as well. Like in terms of what the like very first steps are to follow. I mean, everyone always says to me like, Stevie, what podcast microphone should I get? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. sure that matters, but just buy the damn microphone. It's really not the most important thing. In terms of the setup, like the tech setup, it is literally just following steps. And if you feel like you're totally not a techie person, there are so many online people right now that can do that for you at a very, very affordable rate. So spend like 1% of your time on the tech side and then spend 90% on your time on like developing the skill of creating quality content, becoming a good interviewer and creating a great show. Like that's the where the attention should be but it always starts because the tech is the first thing you need to set up so I get that right Um, but if I can do it literally anyone can do it god if I can do it anyone can do it (laughs) (laughs) but it's one of those things right like there's you definitely scream at the computer a couple of times and you're like Uh god damn it why have I not got this and then it works out. Like it's not a yeah. yeah. reason not I, to do it. I know it. with me, like I know what I'm like. So I'm like I can sit here and try and figure all this out and follow all this, but I'm just like I'd rather just pay my VA to go and do it. And she can do it in, in, in a fraction of the time that it would take me to do it. My time is better spent in other areas. So to me that just makes perfect sense. I know some people love playing with all that and editing and stuff like that. Go for it. If that's you, then have fun with it. But I think for me 
having a simple process to follow and going, what are the steps that I need to do? What do I name my podcast? You know, um, how do I go about getting people to, you know, to interview? Like all the the bits that you cover in in your course as well made it just so helpful because it was just like step by step, step one, step two, step. Like it was just um, – it allowed me to just actually do what I needed to do rather than sit and overthink and procrastinate, which is what I tend to do a lot with things. Same. <laughs> but procrastination is usually a sign of something deeper that you don't want to do. So you should listen to why it is that you don't want to do it and outsource it. What I will say, like in the yeah. early days, like I just did all of the podcasting set up myself. And I think it's because I had a lot of time but I didn't have a lot of money, right? And so yeah. I had to learn the skill of doing it because to be honest, I couldn't afford to pay someone to do it. I couldn't afford to pay someone anything to do it. So like it's a time money scenario and I actually am really grateful that I learnt the skill of doing it even so I know what a good job looks like in terms of outsourcing it. So I yeah. think like regardless of where you're at, like it's easy for us to say, oh, just get someone to do it. Like I truly understand what it feels like not to be able to do that. But I do think like that's where it's like, well, I've got to learn the skill and I've got to do it and I'm going to do it. Like it's just one yeah. of those things. It's well, I think that helps money. as well when you, when you do go to outsource, you know how long it's going to take and what it involves. So when you're briefing someone, you can go, well, I know that only takes two hours or it takes a half an hour and you're trying to charge me five hours. Like. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it certainly helps with that aspect as well. Yeah. And it's all very like it's very task based. Like we have uh, a somebody in our team. She's amazing at putting our podcast together. But literally the only thing I do is I press play, like I write an outline. I press play. I record the podcast episode. I press stop and then I put it in a Google folder and she follows the whole process from start to finish. And there is nothing else for me to do. And it's beautiful to get to that stage. It doesn't start yeah. that way. but. Um, but then it becomes so leveraged because it's the most, it's truly the highest ROI activity in our business, like bar none, like yeah. the highest ROI, but also the most leveraged in terms of time. Like it's, I do 20 minute episodes. So it's like 40 minutes of my time a yeah. week. It's crazy. And the thing is as well is it's evergreen. So it's sitting there, as you said, like you can go back and listen to the podcast from, you know, two years ago. Yeah. So it's not like it's uh, it's constantly, oh, my God, it's going to disappear like social media tends to do. Yeah. It's like, well, I can listen to this. People can binge watch this. I was on a, um, I was a small business big marketing podcast. Oh, yeah. Listening to some stuff of theirs. And I was going back through going, they've got 600 and something episodes or something crazy. And going back through and looking at all the interviews that they've done, I'm just like, oh, my God, this is, it's got so much content in this thing. Yeah. And it's amazing because you can still go back and listen to it and listen to the people he's interviewed five, six years down the track and it's yeah. still relevant. He, his is one of the first podcasts I ever listened yeah. to. Yeah. Like years ago. Me too. Yeah. He got me into marketing. Good old Timbo. Yeah. He's cool. <laughs> I know. Nice. He knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, so can you share three tips with anyone who thinks they may want to start a podcast? So what are three sort of top tips you can give them? Set a date not more than like 30 days in the future because I, like I feel that. like podcasting is one of those things that you will continually put off. Like, for example, I've had write a book on my like to-do list for the last four years and I feel like it's the same thing. If I just set yeah. a date, I would do it. It's funny how that works. Um, <laughs> so I do think setting the date is the most important thing. I think it's important to like, so one rabbit hole I really went down was like good <laughs> I feel like when you get on Google and then it just becomes like super overwhelming because there's like videos everywhere. So I do feel like I know I have my podcast course. I'm that like that is to the side. I think whether you find find a way that there is a step by step system that you can follow so that you're not yep. getting like sidetracked by all of the things. Um, and then in terms of like really practical tips around like making it a huge success, um, release three episodes on the first day. So get three episodes out there, tell everyone to like subscribe to the podcast, to download the podcast, like all on the one day. And you'll give yourself the best chance of hitting the charts, which is one of the best chances you have in the early days of like getting the word out there because it'll literally show up at the top of the, the podcast um, apps. So yeah, set a date, just follow a step-by-step. -step. Don't get overwhelmed. Just like Always think of the right next step and then be really strategic about that launch day. 
I love the tip about the date in particular because I know when I when I did the course, I was like, right, okay, when am I going to launch this? And, of course, there's always stuff that cu- comes up and you go, oh, I can't do it then because I'm going to be away. I can't do it then. So there's all that stuff that pops up and I went, no, I just have to set a date and make it happen. And I was like, I want to. Ha- this has got to happen soon because I can sit on this. I know what I'm like. I can sit on this and I'll be like next year and it won't have happened. So I was like, right, six weeks. I'm done. I'm learning it. I'm doing it in six weeks. And I was pretty close to that in terms of doing the course and having it launched that quickly. So it is possible to launch this stuff really quickly um, rather than, you know, just going, oh, it's going to take so long to do it all. It's just like, no, just get in and freaking do it. <laughs> Have you heard of, you know, Parkinson's law? So it's like this law that time, exp- like your work expands to the container of time that you give it. Yes. And so I use this for everything, but like, you know, for example, if I need to create a webinar and like, I love laboring over it and spending like days on it and stuff. And like my, I'll literally finish it like on the deadline that I gave myself because I gave myself that time. And so if you like condense yeah. the amount of time, it's actually crazy. Like you just, you just get it done. Like you just do. And maybe it's yeah. not perfect, but the thing is it'll never be perfect. And you need yes. to give yourself like the it needs to be okay to suck. Like the big thing that I think scares people is they're like, oh, I want people to listen to it, but I don't because like I know that I'm not that great of it and it probably sounds like I'm reading and like all of the things. And it's like, that's probably going to be true. And also that's totally fine because you need to get 10 average episodes under your belt so that you can become a pro podcaster. Exactly. And I've been very conscious of that as well through the process because I've been like, you know what, I know I've recorded a couple I remember recording one on a Sunday night, which probably wasn't the best idea after a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> I did it and I was, and it was a short one, but I was like, oh, that wasn't great. I should have said this here. I should have done that. And I went, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there. And at the end, I think everything I said, look, I'm doing this on a Sunday night and I'm tired, so forgive me if it's not perfect. Yeah. But I was like, I need to allow myself not to have to get into that perfectionism mode as well and just go, well, it is what it is. People can probably relate to that because they've done stuff when they're tired as well. So... I think it's too easy to get caught up in that. Oh, but exactly. It has to be perfect. It has to be just right rather than just just do it. Just start it. Just do it. Like I'm still learning. I hope, you know, I'm going to improve. I'm, you know, like it's, it's one of those things where it's like you just got to start it and then you can get better and learn and and all that over time. Like you're not going to be fantastic on day one. Yeah. And like people will be the ultimate supporters of you. Like if you put it out there, they will be so supportive. I think that's the one thing that really surprised me. I was like, oh, I had all of my own things about this, but actually people have been really supportive and this is amazing. And I feel like that gives you that like confidence hit to like take the next step as well. So yeah, just do it. So uh, we've been talking about it um, a little bit, but can you tell us more about the launch Your Wildly Successful podcast? course what it involves and how people can um be part of that well firstly it is the longest course name in the entire world <laughs> it is <laughs> i don't recommend calling your course <laughs> launch a wildly successful podcast <laughs> and you can't even shorten it there's not even like an acronym that like works l w s p no l y so Um, Yeah, so that's basically like our system for putting together a podcast. And it's more so the real point of difference with it is it's not just like create any podcast. It's more create a podcast that will act as the authority builder and lead funnel for your business. So um, I think there's a lot of podcasts out there that just teach the nuts and bolts. And we do that as well. But it's really teaching you the nuts and bolts, but then also starting to show you how you can use it as a marketing channel for your business. Um, so yeah, it's always available. We've got a free masterclass, uh, thecoursecartel.com slash podcast masterclass. And it goes through like the five step system that we use to launch a podcast. So if you just want to use that, go ahead and use that. Uh, but yeah. That's- and I'll put, I'll put the links in the show notes as well so everyone can access it. Thanks, love. That's awesome. My pleasure. Now, uh, I'm doing this thing that, I'm tra- that I've am that i started and I'm asking my podcast guest to give a question for the next podcast guest. So our previous podcast um, guest was Kylie and her business is Tiny Giraffe. It's very cool. Like she does this really cool wallpaper and it's all like I've a seen it. Theme. I've seen it's it. It's really cool. I know yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah, I love it. 
so she's um so she was my last guest um and her question was for you tell us about where you want to travel next well I can tell you where I've booked flights to <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> So I had like a big, I don't know, I feel like I've been on a big journey recently. Just, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole here, but just to bring more joy into my life, like just to bring more joy into my life and not to make it all about work and to enjoy every day because it's so important. And one thing I've wanted to do, like I lived in London when I was um, 23 and I may have rose tinted glasses about how amazing it was, but I've wanted to go back since then. Um, So I booked a flight to go in mid July. My best friend lives over there and I've got another best friend that's just moved to Amsterdam. She's Dutch. So I'm going to London and Amsterdam in July. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, London's one of my favorite cities. It's so, it's so fantastic. I love it. There's so many people that don't love it. I'm like, I, just, I feel like it's a hidden gem. Like, so many awesome bits. Yeah, I feel like the people that don't like it are people who grew up there. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Often I hear that and they go, "Oh, London's horrible." It's just like really, like I just think it's amazing. It's like New York. It's just yeah. fabulous. I love it. So uh, I'm going to ask you now. Do you have a question for for my next guest that you can share? Yes. So this is a question that I asked myself recently and I feel like it's a little deep, so I may shock your next podcast guest. (laughs) But I think it's a question we should all ask ourselves, which is like, what are we doing this all for? Like, what is our end game? Where do we want to be in like five years? What does that look like? Because I think a lot of the time we just get on this hamster wheel and we just do the things and we're not really clear on like what the, like what a happy end game looks like. And I think if I could share, even just like asking yourself, the people listening to the podcast, that question, sitting at a cafe for a couple of hours, um, I think can be really transformational. But yeah, I'm I definitely going to put your next, a great question. On the spot. Uh, your next podcast guest on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I always give them a little bit of prep uh, time so they know what, uh, what question they're going to get asked. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't usually try and put them on the spot and go, hey. <laughs> forward to listening um, look, I'm sure I'm sure we can talk about podcasting for uh for hours <laughs> um, and I could pick your brain for hours but um thank you very much Stevie for sharing your wisdom and thank you for inspiring me and inspiring others um around not just podcasts but creating content content and courses and all the stuff that you do um I find that it's just it's very inspirational and, and it keeps me on track if I'm struggling and I'm like oh my god like I just haven't got the motivation or I'm just like struggling with this I can listen to the podcast um, I can you know get some inspiration and some in- insights and knowledge from that and it makes me think more and dive deeper into what I'm doing and I'm sure it does for most of the people that listen as well so thank you and thank you for continuing to do it and I'm li- list- I'm looking forward to hearing many many more episodes in the future um, and thank you for being on Sales Without Socials and talking all about podcasts and how how um, our clients can use them to generate business. Of course. And thank you. And from my perspective, I think what you're doing with Sales Out so- Without Socials is amazing. Like, can I just say, I feel like it's a breath of fresh air to have someone that's focusing on the things outside of Facebook and Instagram. Don't get me wrong. I actually do love yeah. having a place there, but I think you can build such a solid business without it. So thank you for starting your podcast as well. Thank I think you. so many people would be benefiting from it. And thank you for your part in uh, the um, creation of that as well. And again, that, that came out of um, Launchpad. Um, and you know what I was going to do with Launchpad. So there's another plug for Launchpad because uh, without that, I wouldn't have had sales without socials. There you go. Right. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Jenna. Thank you so much, Stevie. Have a fabulous time in London and I will be tuning into the next episode of your podcast this week. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to learn how to swap social media for sales without feeling the algorithm burn or wasting time on spray and pray tactics, that get zero results, then I invite you to join my free training. In it, you're going to learn how you can dump social media and swap it for high impact marketing tactics that don't involve our algorithms, but do involve growing your bank account, how to get crazy engagement and conversion while posting less than ever without needing years of marketing experience to do it, and three critical social media mistakes you're making now and what to do instead. Go to saleswithoutsocials.com.au forward slash free webinar 
to register and stay tuned for more.